that's new music. It's interim music in honor of Josh Eilert's interim head coaching season at WVU. We got interim intro music. Hello, this is Unreasonable Doubt. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt. West Virginia just played their first game of the season. First ever game that counted, coached by Josh Eilert. And Josh Eiler is 1-0. And sometimes the basketball gods just give you signs to let you know that you're not going to lose. And when I saw the opposing team come out with the jersey on the front of the jersey, it's saying Mo State, M-O space state, all in block letters, all the same size. I got to say, I knew West Virginia wasn't losing to Mo State. Can you imagine West Virginia and all this stuff gets leaked? But let's say in the leak, WVU basketball, social media puts a video together and they show a new jersey, W dot VA dot. Like just don't do Mo State. <laughs> Unless I, I may be way off base. I'm not from Missouri. Maybe folks around the program refer to Missouri State as Mo State. I took it as a sign that West Virginia wasn't going to lose. And boy, I had to hold strong in that belief, the most state jersey belief that West Virginia is going to win because that first half, if you didn't know who was on the sidelines, could you, with love and respect to the previous coach, that, that felt like a Bob Huggins first half, did it not? You've watched WVU basketball over the years like I have. You've seen West Virginia have halves like that. Four for 32 to start a game. One half of basketball, West Virginia made four field goals. All of them happened in the first six minutes of the game. Who coached WVU tonight? Like, if you were playing, if somebody's playing Jeopardy, who coached a WVU team that shot four for 32 in a half of basketball against Mo State? You'd buzz in and say, who is Bob Hoggins? And I'm saying this, I I believe that this first half was in tribute to Bob Hoggins of we're not going to make shots, but we're going to stay in the game and we can't shoot like that forever. It's almost like don't want to harp on the offseason, but you come into this season and I and you feel like this team is going to give us life lessons. And the life lesson they gave us tonight is sometimes in life, you're going to shoot four for 32. You're going to have a run where nothing goes in. You're going to shoot shots off the side of the backboard. You're going to front rim a layup. You're going to go 14 out of 20 minutes in life, not making a basket. And then you get a chance to think about what happened in life? <laughs> You've had a stretch of life equivalent to four of 32 on a basketball court. And then you're faced with the choice. Are you going to accept that you're a 12 and a half percent shooting person in the game of life? Or do you know that you're more capable than that? That you're you're not defined by the 12 and a half percent that you have a chance to reset and focus and lock in and prove that you're playing the game of life like you've done it before. You've got a chance to turn it around. That's the life lesson. This season is going to be a ride and it's going to be a ride filled with life lessons. Some of those are going to be life lessons that aren't going to be as optimistic because life isn't always optimistic. But tonight, you get the don't let 12.5% shooting define you. And West Virginia didn't. They came out, shot over 50% in the second half, had double-digit leads at times, got tight at the end because it's West Virginia, and then they pulled out the eight-point win. And you got a glimpse in game one, don't, like with any season, not going to overreact to game one. It's Missouri State. It's Excuse me. It's Mo State. They're going to be a mid-to-top-level Missouri Valley Conference team. 
what did Missouri State come in as far as a game plan? Guess what? Anytime Jesse Edwards touched the ball, Missouri State was not going to play that 1v1. <laughs> they were bringing at least one guy. And sometimes I saw Jesse Edwards with the ball, and it felt like five Mo State guys were within arm's reach of him. And that's something, especially early on in the season, but overall is probably a, a solid strategy. Get more than one guy on Jesse Edwards. When Jesse Edwards has a chance to throw it out, try to force it to guys not named Quinn Slazinski or Seth Wilson and give those guys the opportunity to shoot from distance. I mean, they were they were asking Kobe to shoot from distance. They, I think they were concerned about Josiah Harris, um, but there were some guys that they were absolutely not concerned with. And did you know what else they did? They played full court defense. If you're, if you know the team is going to have eight, they're eight deep, and they actually just want to be seven deep, but have to be eight deep. Then you, then you pressure them full court. And I was shocked that West Virginia didn't get a backcourt violation. Got close a couple of times. But overall, low turnover count. Handled themselves well. But you could see, just like in the first exhibition game, Kirk Creesa not on the court. And he's not going to be on the court until next month. That the offense gets stagnant. And it's game one. And guys, some guys are playing their first college basketball that counts some of these guys playing their first game in a mountaineer uniform and there wasn't a lot of offense ran in the first half it was a little bit of motion and then guys just standing around and trying to create and running into the defense and taking very contested shots it just that four for 32 was earned it wasn't we weren't making shots it was, we took really bad shots <laughs> for the whole half. Took a lot of, of contested shots with just a handful of, uh, just, just a two or three that should have went ends. Most of it, no passing, driving in, shooting a contested shot. And it looked better in the second half. There was more movement. There was more passing. More confidence. Some of that first game nerves went away. And the things you can take away from this game on the positive side is most State never got into the bonus. Or no, they got in the bonus late in one half and they and the guy missed the front end of a one on one. That's it. And so that's not a Huggins team. That's not a Huggins team. Four for 32 screams Huggins. Not fouling until the other team's in the bonus, that's that's not. And, they, and, you know, of course, West Virginia can't do that. They don't have the luxury of every guy's got five fouls. Let's take it to the limit and let's go 12 deep and see what happens. You got to have you got to have these guys on the floor. Those starters, you got to have them in as much as possible. And Jesse Edwards played 37 minutes. I hope that dude's in shape because that sounds about right. Need him in the 35 plus minute range. And he was effective. He only took seven shots, 13 points, 13 rebounds, got some blocks, two assists, and did all that again with having two to five guys draped over him. He made it work. Quinn Slazinski, your leading scorer after one game, confident dude, really was being overly aggressive in the first half, just dribbling to the basket. And he had it early, and he was getting to the foul line, but sometimes it was dead end. But second half, in the flow of the offense, made some open shots. Slazinski has a calming presence, and that dude's always talking, 100% always talking, in a, in a contained way, never off the rails. <laughs> um, Kobe Johnson had a clutch shot late, had a three at the end of the shot clock that didn't count, but he shot it and made it. Dude, just like I know Kobe Johnson, 
very little expression, but you cannot watch that game and say that Kobe Johnson was nearly invisible. And some of that is based on the circumstances. He doesn't have the opportunity to be nearly invisible when you're one of eight. But my threshold for him this year was to not be nearly invisible, and he was not that. He, he kind of wants to post up dudes, kind of wants to go back to the basket and muscle his way in to get an easy bucket. And I think he's capable of that, especially here early on in the season. Definitely not nearly invisible. And Coach Eilert and the, and the bench was all the way into it when West Virginia was getting some dunks and breaking pressure late in the game to put it away. Uh, congrats to Coach Eilert. It's, it's going to be Big 12 play is going to be a totally different story as far as you can't you can't shoot four for 32 in the big 12 and be only down by six i don't think and i don't want to find out but to say that this team is not capable of doing something around four for 32 we'll find out i mean again second half was way different but to say that that's not in them of having long scoring droughts you know that that's going to be just part of the deal. And so defensively, better than I expected. West Virginia played some zone, gave Jesse Edwards his comfort blanket of a 2-3 zone, a little bit of matchup in the second half. Was that totally effective? They got a couple of stops out of it. Also gave up wide open shots. But when you got eight guys, you know the zone is coming. And that's what they went with. And I don't know where Mo State is going to be at offensively at the end of the year. Of co- This is another Huggins carryover. A point guard I've never heard of got was on a heater. That one guy, what did he do? He shot 13 threes. He, he went for 24, but shot them back into the game late. Uh, and a couple of contested shots that definitely... Again, had a Huggins era vibe of, oh, that guy I've never heard of is hot, hot heat fire in the Coliseum. So this game had more shades of of the Bob Huggins era than I expected. All you're looking for in these nine games without Kirk Kreisha is is advancing and try to get W's. They could be one point. They can be eight like tonight. There's no style points here. It's just where you finish the game with more points than the other team. That's the goal. And they did that tonight. Watch the betting line open at seven and a half, drop down to four at one point. It might even got down to three and a half at one point. I think it ended at four and a half. And it was close to the line before West Virginia got a late bucket to go up eight to finish and that was the final score. So definitely nervous seeing that line drop. Everybody thinking, can are they going to be okay? And I don't, I don't know if they're going to be okay because the competition is going to. Can you imagine? I mean, just Jeremiah Bembry. That's the first time he's played college basketball. Uh, it was it was something. A couple of good passes didn't look completely out of sorts given the circumstances. He hasn't, he couldn't play last year. So, no games that counted for him in more than a year. And so, he had limited minutes and he didn't play in the exhibition game. But imagine five Jeremiah Bembry minutes against Kansas, against Houston, against Iowa State. Like, that would just be a nightmare. And obviously, you don't start with those teams. That's the benefit of the schedule. Whether you have eight guys or 14 guys, you don't start with Kansas. You start with Mo State. Mo State. I mean, if you're going to do Mo State, have the M be bigger than the O. It, it slayed me that it was all the same size block lettering. It, I don't know. I, <laughs> you're the Bears. Could you do something with the, with the bear? I don't know. I I had no doubts. There was no pacing this game. I don't think this is a statement for the year based on 
what I mentioned in the last episode, zero expectations. This is not a pace. This is the first time in, this is year seven. This is season seven of doing the podcast. The previous six seasons and seasons before that, I'm standing, I'm pacing, my palms are sweaty, I'm nervous. If I'm one game in, I don't anticipate that happening. It's, I, and not that I, I, I don't think it's that I care less. It's just that I know what the deal is. This team has, has been dealt a bad hand. They're short-handed. The offseason, look at, look at the offseason. Everybody that's on the sideline, on the court, they don't have to be in Mountaineer uniforms or wearing Mountaineer attire on the sidelines. They could be doing, they could be doing so many different things. And that's the threshold for this season is that it's an appreciation of the guys that stuck around and the guys that filled the void of like, we're giving this a go and we want to be in Morgantown. And so it's a bad hand dealt, but they saw the hand and said, I'm playing the hand and I respect it. And I'm going to try to treat that. It's probably going to be good for my overall well-being. It's one game in. <laughs> so if they do turn some heads and if they do surprise, then the nerves come back. Do I want the nerves to come back? I, I guess I'm saying yes. If I, if this, team and I I've, I've said they can only overachieve but if they overachieve of like I had no idea I watched that Missouri I watched that Mo State game how are they doing this against this better team like I don't know it's it's easy to say it one game in but one game in Mo State brought some calm and also knowing that they've only got eight scholarship players that can play and and only three guards and no true backup for Jesse Edwards. Like that's the that's the hand that's been dealt, and so I'm just I'm I'm just rolling with it with with gratitude for who's out there representing the team. It sounds kind of corny, but it's it's the honest it's the honest position uh, that I'm taking, subject to change. <laughs> Success equals nerves equals that's a good thing because they're winning. But we're 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 in. We're into the season. Seven months away. And now tonight, the first night of five months of college basketball. And there's like a million games today. As I'm recording this, James Madison took a halftime lead against Michigan State at Michigan State. I think McNeese State went to VCU and beat the Rams. Like, there's going to be, and, and West Virginia's one game in. But uh, one game in, they're undefeated and no pacing. The Unreasonable Doubt is under the smoking musket umbrella. When I say that, what does that mean? What's under the smoking musket umbrella? Well, obviously, there's smokingmusket.com where you can read articles about WVU sports. There's the X feed at Smoking Musket. There's the Discord channel where you can talk to like-minded people about all the different things WVU and outside of WVU. Very cool place to hang out and talk with folks. Also, another podcast is under the umbrella about WVU football, West by Pod, bowl-eligible WVU, going to Norman for the final time as uh, playing their Big 12 opponent, Oklahoma, with the stakes of the Big 12 championship game? WVU still in the mix in November? Joel and Jordan are going to talk about that. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Smoking Musket umbrella. Smoking Musket! Next game for WVU, our good friends at Monmouth. Monmouth lost to our exhibition opponent, George Mason, by 11 tonight, 72 to 61. So West Virginia goes in undefeated. Monmouth goes in being Monmouth 
and being defeated. I don't anticipate this being a seven and a half point spread. I expect it to be a little bit larger, but who knows? <laughs> it's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. It's going to be at 7 p.m. It's going to be at the Coliseum, and that's happening on Friday night. And this podcast will return on Friday. Are you listening to any other WVU basketball podcasts? Please do, but I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. That's it for this episode of Unreasonable Doubt. Listen on all the platforms, or just pick one. Apple Podcasts, Overcast Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, YouTube. Till next time, I'm Josh Witt, WVU. For the 2023-2024 season, they have 